good morning, I want to say. Um, but uh, well, I just flew in from Northern Europe, so I don't really know what time it is. So we'll, we'll see how that works, right? Uh, it's great to see all guys here, and, and I'm very excited to be able to listen into what you guys do because you do fantastic work. I really, really, it's really enjoyable. So um, I'm Thomas, um, and and uh, I work with a. Uh, a bunch of computer geeks and development aid geeks. We come from uh, uh, the water background, and and you know, well, the development aid geeks do. Um, but the things that we do these days span over more things because people that were using our tools said, well, you know, we need them for healthcare too. We need them for other things. So, so but we came from a water background. Uh, that was our core focus. And uh, we do online and mobile tools for development aid and, and some very specific area of this. And, and um, I, uh, uh, I think of these as Lego blocks, right? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. Actually incredibly complex on the inside, but with open APIs and things, they should be easy to rel you know, start building together and plopping together. So things like Ushahidi, crowdsourcing, the, the, the tools that we've been talking about, how to get communities to report on what stuff doesn't work, how can they get feedback, uh, it needs to hook into other types of systems. And I'll talk about some of the ones that we work with. Uh, so we came into this because, you know, uh, it, we, we talk a lot about open data, it sounds great, it's beautiful, but the reality of it, most of the places where we work, the, the organizations that we talk to, the knowledge is still locked up. It's you know it's in cupboards. It's on paper. You know, uh, reporting comes in as pieces of paper, inch thick data reports, useful to nobody, ends up in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs basement. Right? This is still the reality of things. We're changing it, but we're there, still there. Funding streams they're not transparent. Uh, they're extremely difficult to see uh, where money is coming from, where it's going, who's using what. Um, and and you know, report and monitoring is well to say it's ineffective is is kind of kind. Uh, we've got uh, Katie you know, standing over here with the camera. Uh, you know she knows what it is like to from uh, you know, Blantyre in Malawi carry two suitcases of reports from clipboards where we were where where, where the organisation she was working with were collecting data from the ground. So. We were created as a non-profit organization. We're open source. Everything we do is open source uh, to help address some of these problems, to build some of the Lego blocks. Uh, but you know, we talk about all this open data and how nice things become when we do this. But there's still an elephant in this room, which is everybody's afraid. Nearly. You know, every discussion I come into, every presentation I come into, there is the, it sounds great, but what's going to happen to my job? What's going to happen to, you know, am I going to be held viable? You know, somebody's going to sue me because this data is coming along. Am I going to lose funding because my organization is now showing what's actually going on as opposed to what we would like to be going on? Uh, people are, this is a big issue. This is a big issue and it's a big problem and we, we should not hide this. And we need to face it and deal with it, right? Uh, because otherwise we'll not get there. So, um, Aqua has been working for a number of years now. Uh, we were uh, formally incorporated as a foundation in 2008. Uh, and we started building some tools. And uh, we started putting them together and I, I started thinking of them as end-to-end -end transparency tools. Uh, with funding streams and showing what's going on with money and projects and things like that, which organization does what. And, and um, as I said, there are Lego blocks, and we don't, we, we don't build the whole system. We build specific components of this, and the things that you've talked about are also part of this system, how we look at it. So there's specific about funding transparency. It's about open reporting and monitoring. So the first piece, which is the least developed, it's more like a prototype at the moment. Uh, is Aqua Open Aid. Uh, it's uh, International Aid Transparency Initiative, ERT, Data Visualization and Aggregation. So uh, the uh, ERT, uh, I think, is a really good effort. Uh, the UK government with DFID, they started putting information from their development aid programs 
online on their website. And you can also grab the XML uh, ERT from there. Um, the Swedes did took a slightly different approach. I'm Swedish, so you know, so I'll, that's okay. <laughs> I work for the Dutch organization. My, my wife is Dutch, you know. So, but uh, OpenA.se uh, they visualized it, did it, you know, did it really beautifully. It wasn't ERT. It is uh, ERT is happening right now with them. Uh, but both of these organizations did great work. They took great initiatives to do these things, S similar things to the U.S. government dashboards, etc. But specifically for aid. And but there was an issue with this stuff. And, and they spent a lot of money building these, and they're all proprietary. It's like we can't share, we can't use them again, uh, because that wasn't part of what they were thinking about when they built this. And it's it cost a lot of money doing this. And every organization in the world that's going to need to do ERT or use ERT or you know, interact with this, if they are all going to build a proprietary solution, we're going to spend literally hundreds of millions of this stuff. Right? So the Dutch government sat down with us and said, you know, could we do this slightly differently? And we said, well, why don't we build uh, an ERT tool that, uh, uh, that can suck in ERT XML and republish it, make maps, make, uh, you know, reporting, you know, it looks very much like what the Swedes and the Brits have done. The difference is that we're making this open source so that anyone who needs this doesn't have to reinvent the wheel, right? So, so that's part of what we do. Another thing is our more, most mature product, Act for Really Simple Reporting, which is about visualization and reporting about projects or programs. So we got, we got good commitment. We got um, more than $150 million worth of commitment to put projects online. In other words, projects worth $150 million to come online. Our goal is like $4 billion in the next couple of years. To get these projects online visualized and shown, so here are the first 300 projects that are online. Uh, and, and, you know, the projects, you can list them, find them. This stuff is all brandable. You can put it on your own website with your own URL, with your own brand, and so that you can see here are our projects. And so it's an online service that we run. And, and we have about 500 partners participating, putting these uh, projects online and using them. Some uh, considerably more than others at the moment. We have organizations that are completely committed to put everything they have online. And, and others uh, have just started and sort of dipping the toe in the water going, how does this work? You know, can I put my stuff online? Uh, and and uh, Aqua Really Simple Reporting is about visualizing projects. You know, uh, I'm Swedish. Uh, Sweden gives 1% of his uh, GDP to development aid and Quite frankly, up until you know half a year ago, a year ago, the Swedish citizen could not see where the money went. That was not possible. Um, and we still want to give the money, but we think it's a really good idea to be able to see that. So, so um, I for RSR is about visualizing this particular project. You know, where is it going? Who is doing what? Where are the updates, the map, the descriptions of it, all of this? And all of this can be interlinked into the ERT structures. So when you have an ERT, uh, doc, uh, an ERT page that describes here's funding streams, you should be able to click on a URL and end up on a program page that looks like this. And, and this is something a citizen can look at and understand. A donor, somebody who gave money, they can look at it and go, oh, that's where my money goes. And, and here are updates coming in from the field with pictures, their videos, they can even be SMS, right? So somebody doesn't even have to have an internet connection to participate in the narrative around what's going on with this project or program. Um, and that's the whole, that's the whole idea. And, and we're also making this system ERT compatible so that the people that uh, are, you know, the organizations that are small that put all of their projects in here, they can then say, We've, we've done ERT too, because this is going to export ERT XML as well. So the next thing is something uh, we're working on together with Water for People, uh, a US organization, uh, which is their uh, flow platform, which is going to become Aqua Flow. Uh, it's mobile data collection, uh, so it's sort of field surveys using a uh, mobile phone, so you know Android model, mobile phone, GPS point photograph, and a survey that the whoever uses this has defined. Um, and it's about um, you know, data collection, analytics, and scoring. This has been used, uh, among others, by the um, Water and Sanitation Project, together with the Liberian government, uh, collecting thousands of data points uh, in Liberia. Uh, 
and, and is being used at the moment or, or, by the Water and Sanitation Project in um, Sierra Leone, for example. And uh, we're, in, uh, we're in the process, we're just to final dotting the T's and, you know, dotting the T's and crossing the I's, I was going to say, right? Uh, with Water for People to get, the, to get the, uh, uh, everything done. All is going to be open source. We will run this as a service as well. It sits on top of Google App Engine. Because for all of these tools, essentially nobody wants to run them. They're complicated animals to develop and run. Uh, but we're open sourcing them for anyone who wants to do their own. But the, you know, the Aquarius R, for example, is, it's hugely beneficial for everyone to have one database. Because it becomes like the Facebook for your projects where you can see what's going on, as well as the LinkedIn for your organizations. You can see who's working with what project where. You, know, you can see all the interconnections, and we can start taking that data and visualizing it and give people an idea of what the hell is going on. And if you, if you split that over hundreds of different installations and databases, it becomes really, really complicated. Um, so anyway, it, it's going to all become open source and available. It's not there, and we're in the middle of fundraising for the next steps with Flow because it costs money to build these things. Um, and um, so here's an example of, uh, this is from Blantyre in, in, uh, in Malawi. Uh, actually, a big chunk of this data uh, was collected well, under the supervision of Katie. And, and here's like a typical data point, you know, a well broken, doesn't work, and information about that that you can drill in. And we're going to start making all this customizable and, and put scoring tools and all of this so you can score it against national policy, you know, how well is this doing and how well are we doing in this particular region and things like that. So um, we're trying to take these concepts that we're working with, mapping and telling stories, because we believe RSR about, is about visualizing and telling a story, the narrative. Flow is about data. You do, data without the narrative is useless. You don't really know what you're looking at. You don't understand it. Uh, you know, narrative without data is also useless. So therefore, we think these are important components to have. You can use our tools, one or the other, but the, the future, they're all going to beautifully interlink. It's going to take us a while. <laughs> uh, so the, the idea is to, you, you, you want these things. You want donation engines. You want you know, maps integrations. You want ERT compatibility. You want you know, widgets, RSS feeds. You know, SMS integration. You want all of this stuff, but you don't want to have to do it yourself. You can. If you've got IT people, uh, they can go and sit down and do this stuff and sort of interlink Facebook with blogs and all sorts of things. But it's a lot of work in maintaining that. So essentially, our goal is to run this for, for lots of organizations as cheaply as possible. We're a nonprofit. Uh, our uh, biggest investor at the moment is the Dutch, Dutch government, but also Rabobank, etc. And so what? I'm nearly done. So what? Everything we do, even if it isn't at the moment, it's going to get open data. There are open APIs. Like Vivek Kundra said, open APIs should be the default for this stuff, right? Uh, open source, open standards. Right? And one important thing which is going on with the RT at the moment is they're trying to say, well, the RT, we need to take it to the next level. And they're pointing at some bureaucracy somewhere in the world and say, oh, this bureaucracy should take on the advancement of the RT standard. I think that is wrong. Uh, it's going to get stuck in bureaucracy. Uh, need to keep it agile, need to keep it fresh. Think about the team that's done the RT work so far, figure out how to fund that so that we can get further with it fast. Uh, still an open standard, but don't let it get bogged in bureaucracy. And so what? These tools, like I just said, open data, open APIs, open source, this is open standard. This is what made the internet what it is. It completely transformed how we interact. It completely transformed how we sell, in, do things, talk to each other, because it was open, it was easy to use, right? This allows us to go to the next level. And that's what it's all about, right? I normally stop here, and but I'm going to add one more slide, and that's the open source movement. Right? Humanitarian, free, and open source software people, like Ushahidi, like others, they do fantastic work. They need your support. You need to engage with them. You need to work with them. Uh, this is the future. 
I'm not saying that open source software is going to replace Google and IPM and etc. But we need this part of our this as part of our ecosystem for the future, uh, and you need to do you need to engage and participate. And don't be fooled. Hackathons are great to get people connected, get things started. In the long run, information technology infrastructure to run our world needs to be paid for. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be run by volunteerism, right? But we can still pay for it and have it open source so that as many people can benefit from it as possible. Thank you.